Oh, uh, just you know, I mean, I listen to Todd. We defer, you know, to Todd. So, you know, we we all have to. We got to get these guys in here. We got to study. We got to learn what to do. Teach them our program. And uh, you know, so if he's back out there tomorrow, then we'll we'll coach him up. Obviously, you expect these guys to come in in shape, but how much is something like that to be expected? I, I think it's hard day? to think that they can recreate, um, you know, with a trainer. Uh, how we do things, and we and we see that with with guys that that have come back and started with our off season program, and guys that have joined a few weeks in. It's it's just different, and um, I know that they're working and they think that they are, are trying to get in shape, but that's just not the the case. And so um, that's something that we have to focus on and try to make sure that we're getting some work in. But you know, with all of them, you know, trying to be as smart as we possibly can, Jim. What do you look for, Mike? Maybe on the first day, you know these guys are gonna make mistakes. You want to teach them the right way, but you know, know what has to. Yeah, happen. I mean, who can keep their composure? Who can who can try to be poised? Who has some instincts uh, when it you know it's chaotic and and be able to fight through some of that? And I think you, we all saw that in the team period. Um, you know, it might have started out okay, and then you know really just went downhill from there. And you know, with the operation and, and the cadence and just the you know quarterback center exchange. You know, that's. That's critical, but you know, not going to make a whole lot of excuses. But you know, when a quarterback meets the the center last night and their first opportunity to to go out on the field and snap is is today, you know, some of those things happen, and we just ask them to you know try to be able to fight through that and not stand around and and, and not finish the play. How do you feel about the way Malik was able to you know kind of get the guys in and out of the huddle, get the play regurgitated? Yeah, I thought it got better. I think it. Um, you know, it got better in seven on seven, and that's all we're looking for is to make some improvements and, and have a great attitude, be be coachable, be willing to learn. Um, you know, it's fun to, to try to you know, get this group together and it's just be able to coach and uh, teach them new things and teach them stuff that we do. There was one stretch late where he maybe had three tough throws, but then he came back and made a couple of really good throws, one up the middle to a tight end. You like the way he kind of bounces. Bounce yeah, it didn't seem like, you know, we just talked about not letting anything affect you. You're going to get in the huddle. I mean, we have done this for, for a few years now, so they all look the same, right? There's going to be the quarterback center exchange. There's going to be the calls in the huddle that get called backwards um, and get called the wrong way. Uh, the left guard's going to go to the right when he's supposed to go to the left, and he's going to run into the tackle, and, you know, the play's not going to look very good. We've been through it, and I showed him examples of it last year. I said, this is going to happen today. As much as we don't want it to happen, it's going to happen. Uh, we have to get, we have to regroup, and uh, and I think he did that. I think that's a great example of, of him. Uh, you're going to have incompletions. Uh, it was good to see him take care of the football, you know, run when he needed to run, um, trying to show him all these things of how we want to play the game. What's the balance of him running and taking off? rather than in practice trying to make, make his way down the field, let a guy go up and get the football, and how do you balance that? Well, I think that you want to try to practice the way that hopefully you're going to play in the game. And, you know, we want to be aggressive. We don't want to be reckless. You know, we, we understand how critical taking care of the football is. And, um, you know, a lot of that is just risk-reward and, and being instinctive. We, we don't want robots. We want, we want players that you know, know what to do that are in our system that, that can be poised. And then when it's time to be instinctive, be instinctive. Will the rookies be on their own next week and then join the veterans the following week, or what will their plan be? Oh no, these guys will be uh, these guys will be rolling Monday morning, rolling Monday morning with us, and um, you know I think we'll probably have them lift early, Jim, lift early on the on their own, so that when the vets go and lift, they can steal some extra meeting time uh, with the coaches. But they'll be out here on the field with us, uh, which is great, phase two, and they'll be able to see you know where our guys are. Uh, that have been here with us, the type of condition that they're in, what their skill set looks like, um, and then start that whole competition you know, with the roster. Sorry, what'd you make of, of Ryan's comment about not his job to mentor? Money? Oh, I thought Ryan, I thought Ryan handled that very well. I thought he was genuine. I thought he was authentic, and I know Ryan is a great teammate. Everybody here knows he's a great teammate, and and that is not his job. His job is to you know, prepare to, uh, to help us win a bunch of games, and. Um, and be a great teammate and, and help out. And I know that he's going to do that. So um, that, that was not um, any sort of issue for me. How did you handle those kind of situations yourself, Mike, when you were maybe an older player? And yeah. you know, did, did you go out of your way to try and coach up younger guys at your position? Or, or was it everybody, you know, compete? Or, or how did you handle that? Well, everybody competes. And whether there's younger guys or, you know, one year you show up to camp and there's seven linebackers that have all started a National Football League, that's a – that's a competitive room. Um, 
but you you know you always try to be respectful. I, I was brought along uh, by an organization with some really good veterans, and and that's what I want to try to recreate. That Pittsburgh Steelers team when I showed up there in 1997, and um, had guys like Dermonte Dawson, you know, Will Wolford, uh, Jerome obviously joined that. Levon Kirkland, uh, Carnell Lake. I mean, these are some some guys that I will never forget uh, how they treated me when I you know Jerry Osofsky, who now coaches. I mean, these are these are memories that I have that are very vivid, um, changing positions and being frustrated and Dermonte Dawson saying, hey, bring your golf clubs over. I never, you know, I never played golf at a country club before. And then, you know, these guys, Mike Tomzak is, is trying to take care of me. And those are, those are things that I'll never forget. And that's what I want to try to recreate here. Hey, Mike, were you surprised by the reaction that that comment got, the press conference, but specifically that phrase from him got? No, I, we've been through this. I'm not going to try to take a gauge on you know the social media um, reaction because I think that they're all yeah, like it's being talked about NBA playoff games and stuff. I don't know bud I mean I'm, I, I really it's hard for me to gauge uh, I just can go by what I know and how I feel um, you know and I, like I said I thought it was genuine I thought Ryan was authentic and uh, I'm excited to, to get everybody working together and and building competition they, everybody on our team knows that we're, we're trying to build competition throughout every position, um, and we've been through this. Like the, the veteran's job is to you know, come in here ready to go, and we're trying to find younger, better, cheaper players. That's how it goes every year, and their job is to, to not let that happen. And I, Like I told them, I watched every draft when I was playing because I knew that they were drafting players in my position, and I had to be better than them uh, or I wasn't going to have a job. So the on tryouts, out. what, what do they need to show you to, to – stick around a little longer past this weekend? Well, how much information can they uh, absorb quickly? Uh, how can they push through mistakes, a skill set maybe that we didn't see on tape? Are they better than somebody that, that we signed in a post-draft? Um, you know, so we'll get a better gauge of, of where they're at after you know, tomorrow, and we'll give them a full opportunity to, to, to compete. The schedule came out last night. Uh, any thoughts on how it laid out and with four primetime games? Uh, no, I know that's an exciting time in the NFL, exciting for our fans. I think we've gotten a lot of, um, you know, activity over there with season tickets, and, and that's exciting. So we're, we're excited to uh, play, play the Giants opening week and then see where that journey takes us. And we know that a lot of things happen along that, that 17 games and 18 weeks, whether you play on Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, the buys early, the buys late. Uh, it's just it, it takes a lot of different twists and turns. Uh, yeah, we had four. We had four players. Yeah, so we there's four different groups of players here, Kayla, this weekend. Uh, Christian Deloro, uh, Mason, um, Kinsey, Shy Carter, and um, Rodney Clemens. So those players qualify for the the rookie mini camp. So those guys have been here working. Uh, they can they can do the mini camp. We'd ask them to do it. Um, you know, they, they, they wanted to do it. They had been working, practicing. And then there's the, the draft picks, uh, there's the undrafted players, and then the tryout players. So those are the four different groups of players that are participating. Would those guys be an asset to the younger guys who are going you, through this? You sport? hope so. You know, you hope so that they can, you know, show them how to, you know, you know run a route, what the individual drill looks like, certain technique, um, you know, cadence or details or any kind of tip that they can give them. You know, I think it helps. We talked to all four of those guys, and I think that they've they've done that. They've been here. They can kind of explain how things go. Understand what you said about Burks and that it could could happen to anybody, but it happened to him. Your 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 number one pick, the receiver. Yeah. Well, um, what are my thoughts? I, yeah, I mean, just I don't. I, I don't want to really just try. I don't. You know, I mean, we we they all have a long. We all have a long way to go, and we all have a lot to improve on. And I think the great thing with this group. You know, is maybe we can only improve some of those veteran players just a little bit, man. We're we're searching for things, and you know, use Kev Byard example. Like, hey, Kev, what can we do just this much better? These all these players out here on that field today, um, there's a lot for them to work on. So they're all going to have some good days. They're all going to have some great days, and um, hopefully, we can avoid the bad days. Along those lines, how important is this time for them so they don't get thrown right into training camp with veterans to have these days? With the next, you know, the next. Um, Really, the next six weeks are going to be the critical ones, right? The next next six or seven weeks, the um, the five weeks that they're going to have with the veterans, uh, with OTAs starting, and really kind of seeing the speed in which we're going to operate, and then the two weeks that they have left uh, after the veterans uh, leave for the summer, 
Um, so that, that's what we tell them. They got they got to catch up. Right now they're behind and they understand that they have to catch up. Give. Uh, you know, I'm really positive. I've just enjoyed meeting him when he came for the local day, and just the kid that's right up the street there in Overton. Um, I just liked his attitudes, answered a bunch of questions right today, kind of shows up, and you know, I think he's really going to be a nice addition, you know, to our team. It was it was really cool to be able to see him here for that local day and visit with him, watch him. He worked out. It wasn't like he was adverse to working out. He came and worked out in in, in the rain, and you know, we were excited to be able to to take him. It seemed like you had some positive words for uh, Chig and Conquo out there. With a guy like that, like, what do you like about him, and how do you bring him along as far because he's so versatile? Cause yeah, he's you know, I think there's going to be a lot of things in the run game that we're going to need to improve. But all I know is that he looked like he was exhausted and he was going, and he got back in the huddle and and ran another route. And it's frustrating to run 40 yards and be open and not catch the ball, and then not come back and, and you know be be complaining to the quarterback. He got back in the huddle. Ran the next route, caught the ball when they threw it to him. So I think it was a good start. The, kind of the biggest challenges typically you see from the rookies, like right now, when they go from just being in meeting rooms to actually. It, just, know. I think pure conditioning, just the speed of the game, just the how the pace that we run practice and, you know, the drills. Um, I, I think technique is a, is, a, is a large part of it. I think that the technique that, you know, use the punt team, for example. Some of these guys have never been on a, pro style punt so we're over there trying to teach a kick slide and and trying to punch and how we do the punt team and so it takes time and that's 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 why they call us coaches so that we can we can show them what's expected of them and then once they understand it then we can evaluate them from there